Hi there and welcome to my beginner's guide for Orbital Bullet. I'm Icon and in this video I'm going to wrap up everything you need to know to enjoy this roguelite platformer with a 360 degree gameplay twist. As usual, there are timestamps in the description box, so if you're looking for something in particular, go check it out, you'll most likely find your answers there. This video will cover the gameplay progression, how to play it, what the features are, so if you're looking for guidance, this video is for you, but if you're also here to check out what the game has in store for you, this video is also for you because I'm going to cover most of the features in it. The first thing I want to talk about is give you a quick summary about what this game is all about. This game is about killing monsters in circular levels. You survive as long as you can, and when you die, you'll get a couple of resources which you can use to unlock new stuff, which allows you to go into the next attempt with new items and new options and a little bit stronger until you eventually beat the game. This game formula has been applied by several games in the past now, to name a few very successful and popular ones that would be Dead Cells, Skull and similar titles. It's not bad at all that this principle is apl applied here. The game is a lot of fun due to this. So that's it in a nutshell. The uniqueness about this game is the circular level design, which is really, really awesome. As you see here, bullets traverse around the curves and that. I'm going to explore that in the course of the video with you. Next thing I want to talk about is the user interface and the controls. As you see here, A and D move you left and right. Space is going to let you jump. Double tap space is double jump. And left, and left click shooting, right click swapping weapons. That's pretty much the most things you need to know. Oh yeah, shift is tumbling. That's also really pretty important for dodging stuff. User interface wise, well, upper left corner, that green bar is your health, goes to zero, you're dead. Below that are your weapons, like I said, swappable with the right mouse button. You see the amount of bullets you have there. The, this blue icon shows the type of ammo. You can have weapons with different types of ammo. That's pretty simple. Right to my weapons is my med pack thingy. The white squares show how many charges I got. Holding down F is going to trigger that. And below that is my activatable item triggered by Q. And you see here, whenever I use that, it's getting a, a cooldown. You can use it afterwards then. In the upper right corner, you have upmost the where we have a square with a one in it. That's your experience. Once it's full, you gain a skill point. This game also has a skill system. We're going to go over that later as well. And below there are your currencies. Looks like a lot, but it's actually all quite simple. The only thing I want to say right now is they are permanent currencies and currencies that are only applicable during your run. But more about that in a minute. And that's pretty much all I have to cover about the user interface and the controls. One thing though, pressing escape, opens up here the your gear, you also see the perks you already collected, and over here is the skill tree of stuff you can level up, but right now we can't select that yet. I hope the devs consider giving us tooltips here. But this game's freshly released. I don't want to be too much naggy here about that. Okay, so that's user interface and controls. Let get, let's get into the question how to play this game. So we're going to get in there. And that's our first level. So every level is one planet. And every time you enter a new level, you see the, there's these rings, monsters, and uh, yeah, pretty simple stuff. You see monsters shooting stuff at you. And there's an outer and an inner circle for the level here. This is a pretty cool system because the enemies from the inner circle can interact with the outer circle or the outer circle is interacting with the inner circle. There's a lot of different cool gameplay stuff which is going on there. Once you have cleared the circle from enemies, the music fades out and you can press R to jump to the next sector. So every sector there is, well, a new ring on that cylinder. When we press tab, we open up the map and here you see that's our area here. Each of these circles is one level we cleared and as you see here there's a transporter over to this thing and there's another level above up above us. So this is how we can navigate through this. So we can now either jump up or switch the cylinder. We're going to jump up here and you see here these things, those blue items are currency items we want to get and these cubes here are perks. Always collect all the cubes because 
these are passive traits that will permanently apply for the remainder of your run. The enemies are quite different, whoopsie. And every enemy has his own pattern, how he behaves and what's his specialty. One real cool specialty about this game is you can jump on enemies' heads and kill them like that. This uh, is very Super Mario-like and it's a very excellent way to conserve your ammo whenever you have trouble killing stuff. So, I can only recommend to use it from time to time. It's also a pretty nice way to reposition yourself and, for example, whoops, some enemies even suffer more from these head jumps. And beyond that, there's lots of things to discover here. We have a chest with a different weapon. You can always have only two weapons at once, as you can see here, while switching circles. Keep in, keep in mind that the enemies will immediately react to you, so be a little bit careful whenever you switch circles. When you're done with one of these uh, towers, you see here, enter skill pattern selection. You can here skill your character, and most importantly, you can also select what kind of next uh, skill thing will go on top of that. So that's pretty much in a nutshell how you play this game. I want to talk about the skills in a minute as well, but might as well start with it right here. So when you have skills, these the skill operators here, I can select what kind of bar I want to put up on that. The problem here is, I hope, like I said, this gets fixed at some point. You can't see what these traits will do, so you either learn them or it will be fixed in the future. For now, it's about game knowledge. And the traits here, uh, the talents here are really, really cool stuff. And every level up provides a skill point and the skills are very different here so you have shell damage increase chain lightning so whenever you do an energy at uh, attacks so energy is a ammo for certain weapons you get some split off there's lots of different things very strange things for example laser beams when you do double jumps from from your feet <sighs> Um, yeah, sadly don't have any more exotic ones right now. Ah, here, co Corpse Collector here. That is, for example, one more exotic one. Collect the bodies of the dead enemies to trigger a powerful shot once fully charged. There's lots of different things. What I want to mention, though, is to skill anything from the upper layer here, you need to skill one skill which is directly below that. So here, for example, it has shell damage. Once I have skilled that, you see, I have unlocked the access to the laser boots. Once I unlock the laser boots, I will also unlock the access to the meat cannon and so on and so forth. You always have to have one skill point and an adjacent skill to unlock these bridges. Unlo un otherwise it won't work like that. Skills are gained whenever you level up, like I said, and you can only skill yourself at these uh, operating tables. You can also explore areas where you've already been at. As you see here, this red circle is one would be the exit to the boss stage, but you can also see here, just clicking those circles, moving over, and now we can switch the cylinder. Whoop! And after we've cleared that thing, we can watch, we can check out the map yet again. So let's use the shotgun a little bit. Every level has lots of chests and other hidden things, and it's really worth it checking out what you can pilfer there and one important thing you can always teleport back to some level in in the current um to some to some circle in the current level so when you feel like you you didn't have the money for the shop as of yet you can get the money for the shop afterwards and there's lots of different things. For example, here's a dimensional rift opening a secret level. Exploring these levels is extremely recommendable, but on the other hand, the game also rewards you for extremely quick clears of levels with um, super good treasure chests. So you always ha are kind of in a, in a pressure whether to progress fast or to unlock um, the, these rare chests uh, or to unlock as many loot items as possible. So there's a constant pressure between slow paced exploration and the fact that 
you can get extra rewards for playing fast. Okay, so that's pretty much all I wanted to say about the how to play section and the skills and the perks. As you see here, perks are just randomly collected. Now, weapons. I want to talk about the weapons in the game. Weapons in this game are, are all unique. So right now we only have the shotgun and the SMG. So for example, unique flavors of the SMG. Jump in the air, hold down your left mouse button and you almost not, not drop to the floor. Shotgun, very effective close-up very yeah i don't need to explain to you a shotgun i guess but in the gist of it this game has lots of weapons which have all unique features and it's really a, a a pleasure to play with all these different weapons in this game and i enjoyed myself a lot trying out the weapons that i found so far to unlock new weapons you will find blueprints or over the course of the game these can be found in chests or other uh, random things so once you have the blueprint for a weapon you basically unlock it for the remainder of the runs and that's a pretty good thing weapons also can have higher levels as you see here this is a level one shotgun and the higher the level the more oomph the weapons have and that's pretty much simply said all you might want to know about the weapons select the ones you like most but always keep in mind that your talents that you pick are always going to influence your weapons as well. For example, here I picked a talent which amped up my shotgun shell damage, which is pretty good. So you probably want to adapt your weapon selection also to the talents you draft. And that's where a where the game really starts to be a lot of fun. So I don't think I need to explain much more about the gameplay. Every level ends with a boss fight where you can select yet another level afterwards so after this level we get to select yet another level where we want to go for so you have some freedom of selection there and well after that come the real boss fight and so on and so forth that's just what you would expect from platformers like these and I've been myself very surprised about how hooked up I've been by the gameplay because I gotta say this is more fun than I thought especially that circular uh, level design is pretty cool it's unfamiliar and I liked it a lot okay so we're going to give up on this run and go for some death so I can show you the real unlock systems of the game as you see here the center platform is locked because we haven't killed all the baddies yet so let's uh, get herself killed. Uh, I think there's uh, better options for that. But all in all, we've seen all we can see here in the game. Everything else I would consider spoilers. So whenever you die, you get to keep only a minuscule amount of your resources. And that's these blue nanobytes. That's how they're called. Nanobytes are used to unlock skills here these skills are permanent upgrades which will be applied to every run these are a new weapon at the beginning of a fight of, of the beginning of a game health packs you have to unlock them as a matter of fact and many other neat things one word about the unlocks though these points you cannot hoard them so invest them whenever you invest all of them because the rest of the points you won't be you won't have used will get lost after you start a new game as you see here there's also a lot of uh, question marks i enjoy that because that means you certainly don't know at the beginning where to go for i don't want to leave too many um, recommendations except for i really found the med packs and the starting equipment things extremely useful to make your your runs afterwards more enjoyable. So that's what you can do with nanobytes. But that's not all. Here, the weapon rack, you also find sometimes these cock wheels where you can just upgrade several things about your weapon shelf here. So that's uh, the weapons we can unlock. As you see here, this is a quite big arm, uh, a big assortment of arms. This is your starter weapons and tons of new things. So as of yet, we haven't fully unlocked these things. These are just blueprints and um, you'll have to unlock these fully. So after you have also completed one of these missions, well, would also be called achievements, you gain one of these extra currencies. Once you have done that, you unlock 
the class system because this game also has classes. So you have four playable classes, Mercenary, Hellion, Engineer, and Marauder. So Mercenary is good for crits and bullet weapons, explosive weapons, turrets, drones, summons basically, and the Marauder is the shotgun type guy at, at the end of the road. Every one of these classes has its own skill tree, as you see here, upgrade E, and there you can unlock even more specialties for these character classes. You get those points by beating those missions and getting all those achievements down. Beyond that, there's also more hidden things. For example, you can also unlock new things here by defeating all council members. That's the bosses in the game. So this has a lot of depth in terms of its unlocks and its classes. And this is pretty much all I want to put into this beginner's guide because I think now you already know what you need to know or you might be able to make your decision whether you like this game or not. So I hope you found that helpful. Drop me your comments down below. I'd be delighted to hear what you think about this game or if you have any questions, just ask away. Or if you felt like I missed out a very important spot there, feel free to add it in there. Of course, leave a thumbs up if you enjoyed and if beyond that, consider subscribing. There's daily content coming up on my channel. You just need to hit that notification bell if you want to stay informed. Beyond that, in the description box, there's not only the timestamps, but also my Twitch channel. So if you want to see me live streaming, that's your chance to get to find me there on a pretty much re regular daily basis. So enjoy the game. Have a wonderful day. And I hope to see you guys soon again. Bye bye.